A couple of videos earlier, we talked about how Dave Filoni plans to kind of change the course with Disney Star Wars. We've known for a while now that Disney Star Wars has slowly begun to borrow not only from Legends, but it has trouble keeping up with the new canon, with their retcons and with everything else in between that is happening. Things can sometimes appear discombobulated, and Dave Filoni had the idea or the audacity for Disney to accept something new, finally. Something like Deadpool and Wolverine. I remember the fans panicked immediately when Disney bought 20th Century Fox and we thought that Deadpool was going to go into that Disneyfied phase where things were not going to be said or done because it was inappropriate for a Disney audience. But as we see with the trailers and hopefully with the movie, Deadpool ain't changing anytime soon. The character quintessentially is inappropriate and will continue to do so even under Disney. And this is what Dave Filoni has been kind of interested for a while now. As we talk earlier and we're going to discuss later an R-rated movie for the Star Wars franchise. A movie that I believe will get butts on seats for sure. I mean, I can only imagine a few characters that would, that if given the green light for an R-rated movie would just be the best movie you have ever seen in Star Wars. Just imagine a movie about the Blackwing virus. Yes, you've seen that. Those were the original Death Troopers. Stormtrooper zombies. It actually comes from the novel Star Wars Death Troopers, so this is legends by now, but imagine something like that, some movie like a combination between Star Wars and Alien, or something with Darth Maul. I know Darth Maul can be a pretty horrifying figure, perhaps even Darth Vader, something with the Sith for sure. Well now Leslie Headland has come out and said something similar as well, this is why I think something is happening behind the scenes and they are talking more and more about something more mature, more R-rated, specifically talking about Jackie's death in episode 5. She went on to say, I do think it's kind of cool that there's a lot of, for lack of a better term, self-awareness among the Star Wars franchise. There are certain Disney rules like, oh yeah, you're not going to kill that character, how could you? And not only did we kill that character, but we killed that character in such a shocking and frankly upsetting way and then didn't even really give her a hero's death or anything. I mean, she has a hero's death because she gets Chimere's helmet off before she dies, but that's it. She even went on to say, on numerous levels, Jackie's death proves that no character is safe in this story, regardless of their age, training, or how developed they are. And you even see Master Soul's reaction to her death too. When he mourns her death, she turns to Chimere and tells him that she was just a child. That line gave us chills but gave us also an indication that the Acolyte is going through a very dark phase right now, especially with the revelation of this secret Sith Lord or the founder of Knights of Ren. I don't know what he is, I guess we're gonna find out, but it is pretty dark to say the least, especially episode 5. And I think Dave Filoni has a hand in this for sure. So let's talk for real skis. Whatever you want to call him, the stranger, his real identity, Chimere, Darth Teeth, Milo Ren. There's a lot of names out there, but he definitely showed up for episode 5. That was one of the greatest fight scenes that we got in Star Wars. And I hear the fan sentiment when they're saying that we needed this fight for the Ahsoka series, I completely agree. The Ahsoka fights were not some of the best fights we have seen in Star Wars. They were pretty much just waiting to get to the point of the fight instead of having good choreography like the showdown with Chimere. He really, really resembled peak Palpatine when he destroyed those Jedi Masters inside his office when they came to arrest him. I mean, it was pretty much great tactic, great technique, and the actor was great too, but it gave way to what Dave Filoni is saying in the past couple of weeks, and very recently he even commented on what seems like in the future a R-rated Star Wars movie. Just think about that for a second. This is no mere coincidence. I pretty much believe that Dave Filoni did say this because he saw what was in this episode. He saw the potential of having a horror-like but gritty, real Star Wars movie, series, whatever you want. And I think the best person for this, of course, could be a Quentin Tarantino-like director or Quentin Tarantino himself. I mean, an R-rated one 
You just don't get these chances that often. Think about the 2017 movie Logan. How great was that movie? And now another R-rated one that Hugh Jackman is going to feature in, Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm sure it's going to be a hit and Disney is looking at this pretty closely. So let's get back first to what Dave Filoni said. He said, sure. I mean, I don't know. I think it's interesting when talking in the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast recently. He said, the bottom line is whatever we do, it has to be really well done. And if something is really well done, well, in my opinion, I think that there should be definitely somebody like somebody like James Mangold, who directed Logan, somebody like, as I said, Quentin Tarantino, who is well, well versed in bloodshed and R-rated movies himself. I remember when Quentin Tarantino expressed his interest in a Star Trek movie, so it could not be far off where he could be interested in a Star Wars movie instead. And imagine how much potential does a Star Wars R-rated movie have. Imagine Quentin Tarantino writing a movie about Darth Maul, or at this point, Maul, during Imperial times. He is in charge of the crime organizations. We saw that in the Solo movie. We know it from the comics. Kira is at her service, and the crime syndicates are all all adhering to Maul's leadership. Criminals going on a murder spree and a former Sith with a bloody lightsaber, that's just in Tarantino's wheelhouse. Now we talked about Deadpool and Wolverine, just think about this too. This is a Disney movie, by the way. In case you forgot, this R rating, this R rating talk by Dave Filoni comes just before Marvel is releasing Deadpool and Wolverine in theaters. This is an R rated movie starring Ryan Reynolds, who actually went on to say, I'm really proud of Marvel allowing us to have this rating. Ryan Reynolds went on to say it's a huge step for them. It adds a whole color to this kaleidoscope wheel and that different different people would be entertained for forever. And after this interview, again, Dave Filoni went on to say very, very similar things. He said, I think when you look at something that is taken as different as Andor, it's so well done and Tony Gilroy and his team did such a phenomenal job. There is definitely an audience for that. I think this is great for audiences and for the kids out there so that they can grow up and appreciate these things. He went on to say a lot more things that he learned from George and certainly he is not the guy George was. They have totally different styles. But in regards to Star Wars and to the R-rated one, he said... It encompasses all types of styles, and the creative of this particular story driving it is the most important thing, and they could do something that's within their comfort zone. Otherwise, we're, we're to imagine that everyone's going to come in and pretend they're George Lucas. If you go back and look at the original trilogy, especially that New Hope one, it's as close to an R-rated movie as you can get. I mean, Obi-Wan just cuts somebody's arm, and it sits there bloodied up in the floor inside a cantina with a lot of people. I think that by today's standards, that definitely could count as an R-rated movie. And I think that Dave's comments and all this surrounding the hype of an R-rated Star Wars movie definitely comes because Dave Filoni looked at Chimere's fight scene in episode 5 and he knew what was up. He knew what was going to come. Nothing came close to that in the Ahsoka series. He might be a great storyteller, but he, they didn't hire the, the best choreographers for those scenes or the actresses, just the actors and the actresses just weren't willing to do the job that, that Manny Jacinto did put into Chimere's fight scene. I mean, he was brutal and in tip-top shape, sleeveless. I mean, he looked crazy, so fast. His movements were not CGI'd in the slightest. It was peak Star Wars fighting, and it reminded me a lot of the Phantom Menace, of course. And if you think the fighting dropped back in the Attack of the Clones, because yes, Count Dooku is mostly old and stuff like that, but in Revenge of the Sith, it picked up real fast. Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor did a fantastic job in choreography, and you can see that actors like Manny Jacinto have real-world lightsaber skills. Those dudes can actually come in and play. And I can only imagine his character in an R-rated Star Wars movie. He is already scary in The Acolyte. 
imagine what he could do in an R-rated Star Wars movie directed by, you know, as I said, James Mangold or Quentin Tarantino, anybody who has a lot of experience in in the R-rated genre, but is also a Star Wars fan. Let's not forget that. They need to have a working knowledge of what they're doing within the Star Wars universe. So yeah, let me know, would you like an R-rated Star Wars movie? And if so, what type of an R-rated Star Wars movie? Would you like it to have Sith or Jedi or just go the Andor route and have criminals just go berserk. Me personally, I would love a Darth Maul R-rated movie because Darth Maul just screams monstrous R-rated bloody bloodbath of a crazy something, a crazy mission. So let me know down below in the comments.